Item sorters are obviously an essential part of storage tech, but a sorting system like this will only handle 9,000 items an hour, which is just not enough for most farms. So how do we increase the sorting speed? Well, with parallel sorting, which is a pretty simple concept, but has a lot of small details to consider in application. Basically, parallel sorting is the concept behind all high-speed sorting systems. But what is parallel sorting? To answer that, we need to take a brief look at two basic engineering concepts in the subject of unit operations. This box is an operation. We have one or more inputs and one or more outputs. Something happens inside the box depending on the process. When we put two operations in a row, the operations are what we call in series, meaning one operation takes place first, then a second operation happens afterwards. But if we want to put the operations in parallel, we would shift them like this, so that the input stream would split and the operations would take place at the same time. In engineering, why and when you use in series versus parallel is a complex question to answer, but with most Minecraft sorting systems, it is much more straightforward. I.e. parallel sorting is almost always better for systems over 9,000 items an hour. But to understand how this applies in Minecraft, let's look at this system. We can say that the item filters are in series, as each item needs to flow through the top hopper line one at a time, and interact with each item filter before moving on to the next one. To move this system from in series to in parallel, we need to have the filters all acting at the same time, or for our purposes, very quickly in succession. The best way to do this is to get rid of this hopper line and process the items in entity form, moving the items over the hoppers very quickly so that the hoppers fill with valid items which will be processed in parallel. This works well because this hopper line is our main bottleneck and is making the flow in discrete items at hopper speed rather than larger batches which can be infinitely fast. Moving to parallel sorting will not debottleneck our item filters themselves, but instead allow more filters per item, which run in parallel and increase the filtering capacity. Since the hopper line is running at the same speed as an item filter, having more than one filter per item in series will not increase the throughput at all. You can split off more hopper lines, but it gets kind of complicated quickly, so parallel filters is preferred. So now the question is, how? It's really not too complicated. There are two main methods that are used depending on the dimension, water streams and ice pushers. Water streams are the go-to method, while ice pushers are used where water can't be, such as in the nether. With both of these options, we take the item entities, then transport them over the filters. When a filter finds a matching item, it will instantaneously pick up as many items as can fit in the hopper. Remember from the first storage tech video? When taking items from a container, the hopper operates at hopper speed, or one item every eight game ticks. This is because it sets the eight tick cooldown after every time the hopper does an action that activates the cooldown, like pushing or pulling. But when picking up items in entity form, it will take all items that it can fit during the same tick, which is very useful, as if we have, say, 46 items in a stack with two matching filters next to each other, both of the filters would pick up 23 items and process them at hopper speed in parallel. But there is one major restriction, the previously mentioned cooldown timer. After picking up the items, the cooldown is set for eight game ticks. So if we try to pick up the items when the hopper is on cooldown, then it won't work, which is something to consider when designing a parallel sorting system. But as you can see, there are two main problems to solve with these parallel sorting systems. Number one, moving the items over the hopper pickup area. And number two, timing the system so that the hoppers are not on cooldown when the item flows over them. Both of these concepts together are called 4D alignment. The first three dimensions is the location of the entity in the X, Y, and Z coordinates within the game. And the fourth dimension is time. Moving items over hoppers seems simple. You just build a line of filter hoppers and add water on top, then throw items in the water stream, right? 
Well, it kind of works, but very poorly, as items get stuck in the hoppers and despawn. But a trick has been developed to prevent this from happening. Basically, instead of having the items flow over the hoppers, they flow right on the edge of a hopper so that they do not fall in the dish of the hopper. But the hitbox still intersects with the hopper pickup area, which is one full block over the hopper and inside of the hopper dish. Typically, we use packed or blue ice as the block next to the hopper because item entities will travel faster on ice than other blocks, which will decrease the time that the items are in entity form and thus decrease lag. In order to align the entities, we need to use a solid block that has a slightly smaller hitbox than a full block. Chest, honey blocks, and sea pickles are three of the most common blocks in this application. With these blocks, we can simply have the items pushed into them and it will align them properly on the edge. With water streams, the items can just be collected and aligned with water fairly easily. But with slime pushers, a common trick is to collect the items on top of a chest, then push them off the chest with a honey block, which is the same with as a chest. Then a slime block shoots the edge aligned items past the unmovable chest and over the hopper slash ice path. Sea pickles are a little bit special as they are used to change which edge the item is aligned on for layout reasons. It's not too complicated, but the application can of course become a little bit tricky depending on the capacity required. So we have three dimensions solved. The last dimension is time but it isn't really so complicated. As we discussed earlier, the hopper cooldown is set when the items are picked up. So the next time the items can be picked up is eight game ticks later, meaning that we just need to make sure that the item stacks are sent in an interval of eight ticks or longer. It's really as simple as that. It does not have to be every eight ticks exactly. This is because the only action that will set this sideways facing hopper's cooldown is picking up as it never pushes or pulls. So with single speed item sorters, the fourth dimension does not have to be quite so precise. I will note though, that with double speed item sorters, which happens to be our next topic, will require more precise 4D alignment, which will be explained in that video. But for the fourth dimension alignment, there are loads of ways to do it. Usually it just requires some barrier that either pushes or allows the items through every eight game ticks or so. The result will be what we call parallel sorting and give us the ability to significantly increase the sorting system capacity. The additional benefit to parallel sorting is that the sorting system can be dimensioned to sort out only the useful items. For instance, in our gold farm here, we only want gold nuggets, but not rotten flesh or swords. If we upgrade this farm to say this aggro based gold farm that I featured in an earlier video, now we have approximately 25,000 pigment per hour. That means a total of about 104,000 items an hour, but only 51,400 useful items an hour. The rest of the items we just forget about and send to the trash, making even a quite decent capacity farms sorting system pretty small and simple. But that's gonna do it for this video. The next video is about double speed item filters and the implications it has on 4D alignment. I'd like to mention that this whole series is a community project, meaning that the concepts, examples, and scripts are all community originated and executed. If you would like to be a part of this process, please join the Discord community. The entire process is open for all Discord members. I'd also like to thank my Patreon members as always. I really appreciate the support, especially Jack Does Things, my single top tier Patreon member. And of course, I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you so much and good bye.